In the wake of George Floyd's death at the hands of police officers, cries for reform and racial equality broke out across the nation. Georgia Congressman John Lewis told demonstrators to give until they could not give any more. He's someone who would know. As a young man, he marched with hundreds of African Americans from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. They were met with tear gas and billy clubs. Now, at 80 years old, a retrospective of his life is hitting the big screen. Here's a look. When you see something that is not right, not fair, yeah. not just, yeah. say something, yeah. do something, yeah. get in Trevor, good Trevor. The director of the documentary, John Lewis, Good Trouble, is Dawn Porter, and she joins me now. Dawn, thanks very much for being with us. You know, John Lewis's story has been told and retold, but watching your documentary in this moment seemed to resonate with such an urgency. And, and one of those moments was this scene from your film from the 1960s when young people were going through training in nonviolent protests. They're being pushed and called racial epithets by training volunteers. How important is that philosophy of nonviolent protest to Congressman Lewis? You know, it's really um, central to his beliefs and to his activism for all of these years. And uh, I'm so glad that you pointed out that particular scene and that particular footage, because um, it really shows how prepared those activists were for that moment but also how much they had to face. So, um, you know, it is chilling to watch the beatings and the violence at the hands of the police that John Lewis and his contemporaries experienced, and then to think about where we are today. Um, it was, uh, you know, kind of deeply disturbing and, you know, to me. Um, on the other hand, I think that Congressman Lewis would point out that his version of peaceful protest um, is we are seeing that again today. We are seeing people take to the streets um, in a peaceful way, and that did lead to some, some lasting change that I think is really his legacy. So the film was set to come out in May, but the coronavirus pushed it to July, and then we saw the mass demonstrations in the wake of George Floyd's death. What connection do you see between the fight for civil rights that John Lewis first took up as a young man and what is happening in our country today? You know, um, as we see, uh, and as Congressman Lewis has said for throughout his years of activism, when you see something that's not right, that's unfair, that's not just, you need to say something. And I know from speaking with the congressman in his office in these last few weeks that he's incredibly heartened by all, not just the Americans. We've had protests in all 50 states, but we've also had protests around the world. And I know that that is so meaningful to him um, and so important to him. And I think it's important for all of us you know, we were uh, scheduled to be released earlier this year, but, you know, there's the silver lining to this release date is what is more American than seeing John Lewis um, and seeing the documentary about his life and his activism, activism that he's still engaged in. You know, he went down to uh, Black Lives Matter way in front of the White House mm. and uh, showed his support for the Black Lives Matter activist. Uh, he's, you know, he's fighting pancreatic cancer, but that was incredibly important to him to see how people are taking to the streets in a peaceful way, a way that he really uh, pioneered and that he's led us in all of these years. So I know how happy that made him to see all of those folks out there. You know, for all he has been through uh, with, you know, being beaten in civil rights marches, his mentor, uh, Dr. King, being assassinated, he has witnessed this racial unrest for decades, yet he maintains an almost inexplicable sense of optimism, which really comes through in the film. What does he attribute that to? You know, I think he's seen folks at their best and at their worst, but in the, the many years that he's been in public service, he's seen more good than, you know, than evil. Um, and so I know that um, that, has, that has been kind of fortifying to him. He's also a deeply religious man. Um, he has a lot of faith. He's a very peaceful person in private. 
Um, and he's just been able to, I think, focus on, you know, the good in people. Um, and I think that that's a message that we all need right now. Um, and I know that he has been, you know, personally inspirational to me. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, the congressman at 80 years old fighting stage four pancreatic cancer, uh, taking the time to visit those demonstrators uh, who were out there near the White House earlier this month. What is your sense of how he would like his legacy to be viewed? I am positive that the congressman would like all people um, who believe in equality to continue to voice their support for every, not just American, but every, you know, human being. And I, I think that he's lived his life that way. He's uh, supported not just rights for African Americans, but for LGBTQ people, for women. He supported the, the uh, Violence Against Women Act, um, legislation that, that gives rights and advances freedom and equality for all people. So I, I think that he would like people to know that he was always something that set, someone who said something on behalf of others without a stronger voice. His voice has been so strong for so many years, um, and I hope that, he, that we will all take up his voice in the, in the coming years. Well, the film feels especially timely for the moment that we are facing as a nation right now. Good Trouble comes out this weekend. Don Porter, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. We're looking forward to seeing you all in the streaming of Good Trouble. <laughs>